One of the biggest reasons why we set up VLANs on our network is so that way we can isolate certain VLANs to keep them more protected. Although an attacker can hop VLANs to jump to another VLAN. So let's talk about VLAN hopping. In this video, we're gonna go over VLAN hopping and a couple ways that we can do VLAN hopping, and that is switch spoofing and VLAN double tagging. And then let's get into mitigating against those two scenarios. The idea behind VLAN hopping is that an attacker wants to gain access to another VLAN, to communicate onto another VLAN. And they can do that by VLAN hopping. There's a couple ways they can do that. One is switch spoofing, and another way is double tagging. One thing that manufacturers will do on your switches is they'll set up the switch to do dynamic trunking protocol. This way, when you connect two switches together, they can communicate all their VLANs from one switch to the other switch. And so this really speeds up the process of configuration. But by dynamic trunking protocol can be leveraged to an attacker's advantage. And what they can do is they can connect into a switch and pretend like they're another switch to spoof another switch on the network. They can send out dynamic trunking protocol messages to the other switch, thereby communicating and getting access to all the VLANs. There are some tools on Kali Linux that attackers can use to leverage this. So how do you mitigate against this? Well, first of all, we don't, just don't use dynamic trunking protocol. So on access ports, we turn those trunking on those access ports off completely. And then on our trunk ports, we turn off dynamic trunking protocol on those ports. But an attacker doesn't necessarily need to have a trunk line established with a switch to attack or VLAN hop. The other way the attacker can do this is if they are on a native VLAN, they can do what's called double tagging to access this other network. For this to work, an attacker needs to be connected to a port on the switch that is part of the native VLAN. So they're connected to the native VLAN and they send a frame to this native VLAN with tagging on it. So this is 802.1Q tagging that's on there. And it's part of, it's saying that this is part of whatever the native VLAN is where the default native VLAN is one. So we'll just say that it's part of the native VLAN of one. And then it's got a second tag here that's part of a, another VLAN. So let's say this tag, the second tag, is part of VLAN 10. Well now, this switch receives this, switch two receives this frame, sees that it's part of VLAN one, the native VLAN. And so then it will remove that part of the tag since it's the native VLAN. And then it will forward the rest of the frame on to wherever it needs to go. And let's say it's going now to switch one here. Well, what switch one receives this, but it receives it with the second tag still intact, VLAN 10. So now this attacker has communicated to this switch a frame that is on a different VLAN. And now this attacker has access to a certain degree, a one-way access, to this VLAN 10. Now, uh, the obviously can, the device on that network can communicate directly back to this because they're on different VLANs, but perhaps they, uh, they communicate back to the attacker on a, let's say, a uh, through a layer three network instead, and so it routes traffic back on a different network, or maybe this is just a denial of service attack, and so now this attacker is attacking another VLAN on, uh, that's on your network, for a denial of service attack. So there's several ways an attacker can actually leverage this to do harm to your network. So how do you mitigate against VLAN hopping? Well, for one, you just don't have the native VLAN set up on the ports. 
Just don't use the native VLAN in general. So I like to do use them on some of my trunk lines, but on access ports, I don't use a native VLAN. I also change the native VLAN so it's not the default. It's set up, the native VLAN, if I use it, is set up for a different VLAN that doesn't have any other purpose except for just communicating across trunk lines. So those are two things that I like to do. Another thing is not to use dynamic trunking protocol. And that mitigates against that first attack that we talked about where there is a switch, the attacker is using switch spoofing and they try to create a trunk line with the switch. So we do that by all access ports, we just turn into access ports. So they can't be trunk ports. They're all just access ports. And then on the trunk lines, just to be extra safe, I like to turn on so that they're just trunk ports and there's not dynamic trunking protocol going on on those, trunking, uh, on those trunk ports. And so therefore, now you don't have DTP running on any of your ports and that mitigates against that issue. So that's how an attacker will do VLAN hopping. Whether you're, they're using DTP to spoof or to mimic a switch on the network to create a trunk line, or whether they're using the native VLAN to jump to another VLAN on your network. So we also talked about some ways of mitigating those two issues, whether it be just don't use your native VLAN, and if you do, don't make it the default, and also turn off DTP by turning access ports into access ports and trunk ports into trunk ports. So that way there's no dynamic trunking protocol going on on your switch.